During the summer of 2022, Clallam County PUD undertook the replacement of 21 wood transmission poles with new fiberglass transmission poles along Lordson Boulevard in Port Angeles, Washington. The first step in a new line design is to obtain an accurate profile of the ground surface below where the new power line will be located. This is necessary to ensure that the conductors in the new line will always maintain a minimum distance above the ground, which varies depending upon the voltage in the line. Conductor sag is a measure of how much the line droops below its two points of attachment and varies considerably with temperature. For a typical span of 300 feet between poles, the difference in sag between 15 degrees Fahrenheit and 120 degrees Fahrenheit is 44 inches, nearly 4 feet of change. To obtain the ground profile, the PUD acquired LiDAR data of the corridor. A plane equipped with a laser flies over the corridor, accurately mapping the ground surface below. With this information, a very precise map of the ground surface below is created. With the ground profile established, the new line can then be designed. The ground profile is offset the minimum clearance distances required, 20 feet for communications, 27 feet for distribution lines, and 32 feet for transmission lines. Conductors are then drawn in CAD representing their worst case sag condition of 120 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that they do not encroach on the minimum clearance distances. Construction drawings are then created to show every detail about how the new line will be built. Called staking, information showing what will be removed and what will be installed at each new pole location is entered into the computer. From this information, a pick list is created, which itemizes every different piece of equipment and the quantities of each that must be picked from PUD inventory for the project. PUD warehouse employees then pull all of this material from the many shelves of stock inventory. This material is then gathered together and organized into bins to be delivered to the job site. Cross arms alone make for a very impressive stack. The construction of 21 new power poles requires a significant amount of different parts and pieces to build them, each serving a necessary and important part of the pole construction. The fiberglass poles are a modular design consisting of two separate pieces. The next step is the assembly of the new poles. Using a loader, the first pole section is brought in and placed on waiting stands. The second piece is then brought in. Water acts as a lubricant to help the two pieces slide together. The two pieces are carefully lined up to match and then slid together. The top section is then pushed onto the bottom section until they are fully seated together. Holes are drilled and the two pieces are securely bolted together. The process is repeated until 21 poles are fully assembled and ready for construction. Locations for where to set the new poles are then established in the computer based on many different criteria. The PUD's surveyor then programs this information into survey equipment to locate these points on the ground. Using GPS positioning and reference points on the ground, these points are then precisely located, carefully finding the exact location. A wood stake is then driven into the ground to mark the position of the new pole center. Prior to the start of construction, PUD vegetation removal crews go through the right-of-way corridor, removing any vegetation infringing on or near the power lines. It is now time to begin construction. Olympic Electric of Port Angeles, Washington won the bid and is the prime contractor for the job. The new fiberglass poles are then placed in the City of Port Angeles right-of-way next to each of the old poles that they will be replacing. Poles for most of the new poles are dug using a vacuum suction truck. Next, it is time to attach equipment to the pole. Construction specifications list all of the equipment used on the pole and specify the exact location where it is to be installed. Following these construction specifications and called framing, Olympic Electric crews begin attaching each piece of equipment to the new pole. One by one, each pole is fully framed in preparation to be installed into its new hole in the ground. Even though all of the lines are fully de-energized, 
grounds are attached to each wire for worker safety. The first pole is set and then verified with a plumb bob to ensure it is straight and true in the air. The hole is then backfilled with crushed rock which is then compressed with a hydraulic tamper to firmly anchor the pole into the ground. The old wood pole is then dismantled, first cutting the top out of the pole and then carefully lowering it to the ground for demolition. A small fleet of line trucks is maneuvered into position for the next pole replacement. Called travelers, rollers are installed on the ends of the insulators to help facilitate pulling in new wire. At 70 feet long and weighing approximately 1,500 pounds, maneuvering this massive pole into place takes a lot of planning, coordination among the crew, and attention to detail to make it happen safely. Skilled crews make it look easy. The pole is slowly lowered into the ground and then backfilled with crushed rock and tamped to lock it into place. And the process is repeated. Working cohesively as a team, Olympic Electric crews make rapid progress, averaging two poles installed into the ground per day. Not all holes are dug by vacuum suction. Some must be dug using a digger truck equipped with a massive auger. The auger is set into place and crews verify that it is perpendicular to the ground in order to drill a straight hole. The auger easily chews into the ground, excavating the new hole. The excavated dirt is placed onto a tarp for easy cleanup and removal from the job site. A 70-foot tall pole requires a 9-foot hole in the ground to set it into. Like a well-choreographed dance, there are many steps in the process of safely and accurately aligning the pole into the correct orientation and setting it into its proper final position. A typical line crew is four people, a foreman, two journeymen, and an apprentice. Four people can accomplish quite a lot. Line trucks are loud. With simple hand gestures, crews are able to communicate effectively without saying a word. With all of the new poles set into the ground, it's time to pull new wire. The first wire pole will be 4,716 feet long. To accomplish the task of pulling in the new wire, a rope pulling machine is brought in and set up on one end of the new line. These ropes are then pulled through the entire line of poles and will then be attached to the new wire. The pulling machine will then pull the new wire back in through the new line of poles. A truck is used to help pull the four ropes through the line. With ropes in, it's time to pull wire. Massive spools of wire, each weighing over 4,000 pounds and carrying over 7,000 feet of wire length are brought to the pulling end of the line. Nearly one inch in diameter, this wire is capable of carrying a lot of electrical energy. These spools are then set onto a wire tensioning machine and the wire is fed through the bull wheels of the tensioner. The pulling machine then starts the wire pull. Marked with red tape so it can be tracked from the ground, the end of the wire begins its journey through the first pole. The wire steadily makes its way through each pole in the line. As it is pulled, the wire is carefully monitored by the crew on the ground. Thank you. Shot of speed. Yep, I got it. The wire tensioner maintains a steady back tension on the wire, preventing it from falling to the ground as the rope puller pulls the wire in. And the end of the wire arrives at its final destination. The process is repeated until all of the new wire is pulled in. Viewed from the air, the new poles are some very impressive structures standing tall into the sky. The view from the bucket looking down the new line isn't half bad either. With the wire in, it is now time to pull it up to its correct tension and sag. Sag charts specify what the correct tension and sag are for any given temperature. The correct sag is dictated by the ambient temperature at the time of sagging. A laser transit is used to measure the sag to verify that it is correct. By measuring the height above ground of one attachment point on one pole, and the height above ground at a second pole, and then the height above ground at the middle of the wire, the sag can then be calculated. 
a dynamometer is used to measure the tension in the line. It is installed in line with the wire. Come-alongs bring the tension up on the wire until it reaches the proper value. The transit is then used to measure the height above ground of each of the attachment points and then measures the height above ground to the middle of the wire sag. Correct sag is verified and the line is now ready for service. Four new wires hanging uniformly in the air. From project design and engineering to project completion, 21 new fiberglass poles standing tall into the air supplying clean and reliable electric power for many years into the future.